Hi, welcome to Art by Anna Marie. Today I want to share with you how to lay out watercolours onto watercolour paper. If you've been following me for a little while, you know that I've been doing a watercolour daily series. If you haven't seen it, I'll put a link up here. It's all about regularly painting and enjoying watercolours. Today I'm painting this lovely painting. It's called Alone. Um, and in particular, I'm concentrating on how the watercolour was laid onto the page. Join with me as I talk you through how to paint layers in a watercolour painting. So I'm going to take my pure squirrel paintbrush and I'm kind of just using it like you would a lead pencil to decide where my horizon lines are going to go because I want to create a kind of hill. I filled my pure squirrel paintbrush with just water. It's plain water because when I um, coat the watercolour paper with plain water it's and then I attach a bit of pigment to that plain water you see that it's going to create a very mottled soft effect. So I'm going to do that in just a moment. I'm also using the brush to just add in a few soft colours. I've gone with quite a soft palette and I'm just playing around with some of the colours. A medium amount of water. You can see that I haven't designed any washes for this. I'm going straight from a, from a pure pigment uh, tube and just adding the water as I go along. I've had lots of questions about these um, words and how they disappear. I think it's really lovely and quite special. So if you're looking to create an effect that's similar, um, these are watercolour markers, which you can um, buy online. Mine are Windsor & Newton watercolour markers. So I haven't created a wash here, but see, putting the pure pigment onto the water has created my wash straight onto my paper. Just cutting out the middleman. Taking a darker red. My hope here is that the colours are going to blend so that the sky looks really blended. I'm not going for anything too dark or too moody because I do plan to paint the silhouette of a solitary figure so I didn't want it to be too um, somber. I wanted you to be able to make your own meaning from it as well. So here you can see I'm starting to introduce the yellow so that I can start to make more of a hill in the foreground and that gives my uh, the top of my page a little bit of chance to dry as well. So I've let the paper dry for a while now and I'm going back in with my pure squirrel paintbrush and I'm just doing the outline of what I think could possibly turn into some cliffs. Again I'm just playing around with the paint here, I haven't got any real kind of idea of what the cliffs are going to look like. Sometimes they just develop as you're painting and you've got to go with that. Purple is an awesome colour for background cliffs by the way if you're ever looking for something. You can always paint over purple, it always blends into the background which is great. So I've taken the red and because I'm painting another layer on top of my original layer, this is another wash that I'm putting on. It's not a traditional wash. I'm, you've seen me. I'm just taking the actual paint from the, the water from the watercolour um, pot, the pure water, and mixing it with the watercolour. Um, but that second layer is going to be less blended for that reason. I'm introducing the blue here because I think that 
it creates a bit of interest and it's so tonally different from the purple that it really stands out. And you can see how I'm dragging the blue across the page because I'm creating a kind of hill or a jagged mountain. You want to sometimes try to move your paintbrush in a way that you think the landscape would look like. So you're changing how you're holding the paintbrush and what direction the paintbrush is going in. So for um, for the rocky hillscape I'm, I'm dragging but for the grass I'm pushing up and um, just here I'm just dabbing the sides in um, and that just creates a little bit more texture. So that's got to go away to dry. If I paint wet on wet you know by now it just turns into mud. Now I'm mixing up my purple and my blue because I've decided that the landscape actually isn't dark enough. There's too much white. I always leave a lot of white in my first pass because uh, once you get rid of your white you can't get it back. Um, so I'm just putting a purple with a blue which is going to add a layer, another wash. So this is our third wash but you can see this time because I'm doing, um, I've used a lot more water as I've applied it, it hasn't been as vibrant as the red which had more of the watercolour um, pigment in it. This one has more water in it so it lays easier. It's absolutely okay to trace on a outline of something that you want to paint over your layer. I found using watercolour pencils and tracing them on has been the best so far because they actually rub out really easily if you make a mistake with just a normal eraser. Lead pencils also really good if you like that look of a lead pencil and watercolour together. A lot of people like that. Um, you can see some of the pencil underneath and I quite like that sometimes as well. For this silhouette I've drawn in a half silhouette of a solo person standing uh, looking out at a, a hillside and maybe a mountainside and it could be sunrise or sunset or the middle of the day it's really open to interpretation and I'm just applying the silhouette here and I don't want to get too fussy with it so I so it's quite a dark gray that I've mixed with a bit of black and I've mixed with a bit of blue even if you get your pure colours like a grey and you just put a tinge of red in them or a tinge of blue in them, it really does change and add a little bit to your painting. Um, in this case I wanted just a little tinge of blue to make it um, a little bit more three-dimensional, a bit more texture to it. I decided to leave some of the texture there in the shirt as well. I think some of the powerful elements of this painting are just the simplicity of a figure standing to the side and really you're thinking about composition here like do you want your figure in the middle of the page I like to go and use the rule of thirds so my figures in th a third of the page I'm thinking this painting needs a bit more brightness to validate why the silhouette is in shade so um, that happens sometimes. I felt like I had finished my washes, felt like the layers had been applied in the background and this was going to be the end. But then looking at it I think that it just needs something a bit brighter to, to take your eye across the page. I'm going in with some lighter green grass detail so you're assuming that the sun has picked up some of that. Now I'm introducing some of this gold. I absolutely love this gold. You'll, you'll see I use it quite a lot in my paintings. It's very subtle and it's a beautiful top layer. If you use it sparingly do not use it at the beginning of your painting because you will get gold all the way through your water pot and then all of your colours will come out sparkling which is not always a bad thing but it's um, a bit upsetting if that's not what you were expecting. So you can see now I've got a bit of sun and a bit of gold peeking through the cliff um, taking up the sun's hitting some of the high notes of the cliff 
uh, the mountaintop, mountain ridge maybe. This watercolour is an easy watercolour for you to try at home, laying on the background with um, different sections and holding your paintbrush in different ways. Um, make sure that you let your layers dry. On this painting, I've probably done three, maybe four layers. So make sure you leave yourself enough time between that. I hope you enjoyed that. I definitely enjoyed painting this one. It's been one of my favorites. It's now available in my shop, Art by Anna Marie. If you're not already subscribed, please click, click the subscribe button because we've got more tutorials coming out for beginner painters. Also, if you've got any comments about things that you want to learn, uh, leave me a message in the comments box. Thanks for watching.